This is Jason Porter with the Red Hat Developers Program here with Dan Walsh. And we're, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, containers and Kubernetes. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, hi. Thanks for having me. Um, so wait, what is it that you, that you do at okay. uh, Red Hat? So my job at Red Hat is I lead the container team and the rel-based engineering teams. And that means um, as a technical lead for the group, I have about 30 uh, engineers working under me, underneath me and all things to do with containers at the base level. Um, in RHEL, we consider our number one customer to be OpenShift, so we take requirements from OpenShift and Kubernetes to, to figure out uh, containers. So we do work on things like container runtimes, uh, alternate tools, to, uh, atomic host, um, uh, all things down at the operating system level to, to service higher level orchestration tools. Okay, very good. So as, as an end user, uh, what, what I'm going to be uh, interfacing with as far as containers go um, from a Red Hat perspective is most likely going to be uh, OpenShift. Is that correct? Uh, that's the way we prescribe, although we, we service all workloads. If you want to use standard Docker to build containers, we, we'll work with that. Uh, we're working on newer tools inside of, um, um, we have a tool called Atomic, Atomic CLI, that actually allows you to work to, uh, with containers. It, it, wraps around uh, Docker and provides additional features, but we're also introducing um, now a concept of what we call system containers. So if you think about a uh, booting up system, um, no, I, well, I should take a step back. In the future, we believe that all content, or most content will be delivered in the form of a container image. Um, and so you store your container images out of a container registry, but even, even things that happen at early boot time, um, we want to be able to package those container images. So uh, it might even happen before the container runtime. So what, what happens if something has to run before, the, say, the Docker daemon comes up or, or Kubernetes and things like that? Uh -huh. So what we want to do is package uh, tools up for um, that, that use case. So we've introduced a thing called the uh, system container. And the atomic tool can actually work with system containers in that it'll go out to a container registry, pull the image down, store it locally, and actually configure system D to run it. So if you have a, a container, say you have a you know, piece of software that you want to load a kernel module or modify the actual operating system. Maybe something like a, um, uh, oh, I just, I forgot, a, uh, an Ansible script or something like that. Well, it, actually Ansible would be configuring these things, but I mean more likely things like setting up uh, a certain software that has to be run to run inside of VMware or there's, there's oh, okay. different software. Uh, but even demons that we, we potentially would bring down, like in the case of uh, Atomic Host right now, um, tends to run as a read-only, and then you bring down your images as containers. Uh, we want to be able to run uh, etcd, uh, flannel D, which are two core features that have to be running before the Docker daemon or right. any other container runtime running. So we want to put those as, as packages, container, uh, system containers. Um, and we see in the future that even uh, base regular demons that you might want to run, instead of running them in an orchestrated flow, you might want to run them. So I could envision in the future, a future version of RHEL where you, you'd run Apache in a container image instead of running it on bare metal uh, okay. uh, as a RPM. So imagine you could do a DNF install of Apache container instead of DNF install of Apache service. Okay, that um, makes sense. And things like that. So that, that's sort of what we're working on. Um, and containers you know, run, the, run the gamut, right? That you can run them in orchestrated mo mode all the way up to the microservices way. But you can actually run containers as um, just standalone applications on your host. Got it. Very good. Uh, so, as a uh, as an end user or or a developer, where where do I go to get uh, started working with some of this stuff? So, most of the information we have, we have a, uh, most of our software ends up on a uh, site called Project Atomic. So, Project Atomic is the great is a project launched by Red Hat for all of our container uh, efforts that aren't don't have a, a formal a different upstream. So, Atomic System Containers, the Atomic CLI. Um, Atomic host are all hosted at Project Atomic, plus a whole bunch of other tools. So there's really a ton of stuff out there that we're, uh, we're using now. Um, but we also contribute heavily to upstream container runtimes and other projects in the OCI world and, and all that. So, um, well, but Project Atomic is probably the place to go to find out most of the information on this stuff. Okay, very good. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for right. being with us today. Yep, thanks for Enjoy. Having.